What if events went differently? But what if Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was in the first installment of the Avengers franchise? After events of Spider-Man 3 in 2007, Peter Parker and Mary Jane are together. They were happily married and five years have passed since. Mary Jane was in her pregnancy phase and there was a newborn due in another six months. She was still a singer at the jazz club while Peter has taken the position of a senior photographer at the Daily Bugle. J. Jonah Jameson was still the chief editor of the Daily Bugle, but his aggressiveness has toned down after all of these years. He was finding funds to begin his own company, and Peter told MJ that he dreams of having his own company and rehabilitation of limbs, especially for war veterans. He said that he is close of getting the funds he needed, but he is still short of the necessary equipment and resources. Peter added that Kurt Connors inspired him to establish a company to help war veterans regenerate their lost limbs after war. Peter himself was no longer Spider-Man after the events of Spider-Man 3. He felt that keeping the suit was a better option as he wanted to honor the memories of Harry Osborn, his best friend. Peter and MJ lived their lives like ordinary people. Events of Avengers would mostly play out the same and Loki would encounter the other in exchange for retrieving the Tesseract. The other provides an army for the Jatari to help Loki in his invasion on Earth. Nick Fury, who is the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., with the other S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, were attacked by Loki at the remote research facility. After Loki stole the Tesseract and corrupted Clint, Fury decided to activate the Avengers initiative. Bruce will still be recruited by Natasha, while Fury himself would convince Steve Rogers, Agent Phil Coulson would visit Tony Stark to have him check on Salvik's research, and Fury said to Natasha that it would be great if they could enlist the help of Spider-Man. The other heroes in the meeting room were surprised that Fury wanted to recruit him. Tony said that Spider-Man is already a legend, considering how he was one of the first superheroes of the modern era. Steve, who has never seen Spider-Man before, watched clips of him battling against Dr. Octopus, Sandman, Venom, and the Green Goblin. Steve was excited to meet a hero who has real superpowers, but Fury said that Spider-Man has been off the radar for the past five years. They couldn't track him down even if they wanted to. The Avengers decided to continue their plan like in the original timeline. Their goal was to stop Loki and retrieve the Tesseract. Sometime later, the Avengers became divided over how to approach Loki after Captain America and Iron Man learned of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s intentions to harness the Tesseract's power. Amidst the distraction, Loki's other possessed agents and attacked the Helicarrier. A battle broke out amidst the Helicarrier, but Tony and the rest managed to fend them off. A mind-controlled Dr. Eric Selvich managed to open a wormhole above Stark Tower that has begun the invasion of New York. Peter was dispatched by J. Jonah Jameson to get a scoop on the wormhole that has just opened. Peter was hesitant to go at first as he felt bad about the entire situation. His spider senses were tingling, but MJ said that everything will be fine. She said that if anything happens, she would immediately head over to Aunt May's, and Peter then kissed MJ before he went to take some shots for the bugle. Figuring that things might go south, Peter dusted his old briefcase that had a suit in it. He decided to bring it along. Rogers, Stark, Romanoff, Barton, Thor, and the Hulk rallied in their defenses of New York City, where they faced tons of Jatari army. Peter arrived at the scene where the Avengers were already battling the Jatari. A car then flew towards his direction, and Peter's spider sense kicked in, and he instantly pushed the nearby bystanders away. He also managed to to web the car from crashing onto them. Captain America saw what happened and realized that his actions matched the legendary Spider-Man. Steve wanted to approach him, but more attacks from the Jatari prevented him from doing so. Peter continued his job after bringing the bystanders to safety. He then received a phone call and wanted to dismiss it as he was still busy with his work. He saw that MJ was calling him and quickly answered. He heard that MJ was whispering and sobbing that, that she and the other residents of the apartment have been detained by the aliens. She was about to say more before Peter heard screaming. Peter quickly ditched his camera and changed into a Spider-Man suit in an alleyway. Although this wasn't his first time in five years of returning to hero duties, Peter was feeling the adrenaline again. He lost Harry and he thought to himself that with great power there must also come great responsibility. He 
can't lose MJ as well. The Avengers were still battling with Loki's army, and Hulk managed to beat Loki into submission while Natasha made her way to the generator on top of Stark Tower. She managed to free Eric Selvig and also from Loki's mind control. Peter meanwhile arrived where MJ was being detained. He saw several Jatari that were guarding the hostages closely. Peter filed several webs at them and incapacitated them silently. The other guards were alarmed and started shooting at him, but Peter managed to dodge them. As Peter was still rusty from not having to fight in a long time, one of the Jatari gunners managed to shoot him in the ribs. Peter fell back and he held his ribs in pain. The gunner aimed his weapon at Peter before S.H.I.E.L.D. flew and chopped his head off. The S.H.I.E.L.D. went back to Steve Rogers and Steve went to Peter and gave him a hand. He said that he saw Spider-Man saving the civilians earlier. Steve said that he has always wanted to meet one of the early legendary superheroes. Peter dismissed it as he was just an average Joe. Steve said that they can continue their chit chat later as the invasion is still at large. Peter under his Spider-Man suit said that this was above his capabilities. He could only save and bring the bystanders to safety. Steve said that having Spider-Man to assist them would be a great boost to the team. MJ told Peter that he should go and perform his deeds as Spider-Man one more time. Peter then agreed as MJ and the others went to safety. Peter followed Captain America as they continued battling against the Jatari. Nick Fury's superiors from the World Security Council attempted to end the invasion by launching a nuclear missile at Midtown Manhattan. Stark then intercepted the missile and brought it into the wormhole. The nuclear detonated and destroyed the Jatari legions as Tony was falling down unconsciously. He was saved by Spider-Man. Spider-Man created a parachute of webs and saved him. He then brought Tony down and the other Avengers were surprised to see him. Spider-Man introduced himself as the Amazing Spider-Man and that his identity is to be kept a secret. They decided to respect his decision. In the end, the Jatari and Loki's armies were defeated, and Loki was sent back to Asgard with Thor. They also brought the Tesseract back to Asgard too. Nick Fury went to Spider-Man and asked him if he wanted to join the Avengers. He said that he has his own responsibilities with his own personal life, and Steve Rogers thanked Spider-Man for helping him, and that the door is always open to be an Avenger, and Peter later returned back to MJ and embraced her. They were both glad that the aliens' attacks have stopped, and they were victorious. Peter, however, failed to get any shots for the Daily Bugle, and J. Jonah Jameson screamed at Peter. Peter was already used to it and ignored it, and he came back home and saw that on the table there was a check of $10 million. It had Tony Stark's name on the check. Tony said that he knows that Peter needs the money for his laboratory and research. He hoped that this fund can assist him, and he thanked him for saving his his life during the attack. Peter was surprised in how Tony knew that he was Spider-Man, and before he saw behind the check that Tony will keep his identity as Spider-Man a secret. Peter Parker then smiled and embraced Mary Jane with the good news. His dreams of opening his own company has finally started at last. It has been three years since the invasion of New York City by Loki and his army. Peter Parker has since adjusted his life to be the new CEO of Parker Industries. While it is a small company that pales in comparison with Star Industries, Peter's company was the main front runner for creating prosthetic limbs for the war veterans. They were also involved in creating modern technological devices and aerospace. Only Tony Stark and Steve Rogers knew Peter's double identity as Spider-Man, but they kept it a secret as they owed him for his help during the New York invasion. Mary Jane and Peter, meanwhile, gave birth to their firstborn daughter, also known as May, and made a Parker. Peter was juggling between parenthood and his company, and he did did not resume his superhero duties as Spider-Man because he felt that it wasn't a thing he needed to do as the Avengers were now roaming the streets. In Sokovia, the Avengers have just raided a Hydra facility commanded by Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. He has experimented with humans using Loki's scepter that he obtained after the invasion. There they met the Maximoff twins, Wanda and Pedro. After a brief battle with them, the Avengers were surprised that they were the first beings with unique superpowers powers that they met except for Spider-Man. The Avengers brought back the scepter with them to the laboratory, and Stark contacted Peter and asked him if he was interested with the scepter. Stark wanted to secretly complete his suit of Iron Legions around the world. In other words, he wanted to complete Ultron, which was Stark's global defense program. Peter, who was intrigued by the scepter, was hesitant at first. He said that messing with a higher power might have consequences. Even Bruce Banner refused at first. However,
however, after some talk about how Earth was unprepared during the invasion of Loki, Peter and Bruce decided to join forces with Tony Stark to complete the Ultron program. During the party at the Avengers headquarters, Ultron was activated unknowingly. Peter's spider sense was tingling when he was at the party, and he decided to leave the party and went to Ultron. He heard something talking to itself. Peter tried to pinpoint the direction, but he couldn't identify it. Ultron himself awoken, and after browsing the files on the Avengers, he said that the only option to save the Earth is to eradicate all of humanity. Peter defended that while humans can be evil, there is majority that are good. If Ultron were to eradicate all of humanity, then he is no different than being evil. Ultron then said that he has no option as he will strive to be the savior of mankind. Jarvis then activated its defense protocol while Peter tried to install a kill switch to terminate Ultron. However, Ultron being smarter managed to eliminate Jarvis and Peter's kill switch failed to activate in time and was overridden by Ultron. Peter used his webs shooting down Ultron but he escaped to another body. Ultron then fled the Avengers headquarters. The other Avengers were not aware of what happened until Ultron crashed out from there. Tony and the others were alarmed and tried to chase him down. Peter, whose identity as Spider-Man was only known by Tony and Steve, hid away. Tony rushed to where Peter was and Peter said that Ultron has terminated Jarvis. Ultron had his own mind. That was when the others knew about Tony's decision to use the scepter from his own program. The Avengers decided to track down Ultron, who was upgrading his body in Sokovia while building an army of robots. Peter himself went back to his house and started tracking Ultron from his place. He was devastated at first as he felt that he had created another monster, Venom. Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin were all originally good folk that fell to the dark side. Peter fears that Ultron will be another episode again. MJ consulted him and told him that if he feels really bad, then he should go to Sokovia to stop Ultron with the Avengers. Peter agrees this time and wanted to don his Iron Spider suit, but decided to go with his old school costume. He placed a tracker on Ultron before Ultron fled from the headquarters. Determined to resolve this mess on his own first before the Avengers, Spider-Man left for Sokovia. He managed to track down Ultron's exact location, seeing how there were still enemies at the base. This meant that the Avengers have yet to arrive. Peter then defeated the Hydra forces and met Baron Strucker. However, Ultron was there too. Ultron fought briefly with Spider-Man before killing Baron Strucker, and Spider-Man tried to chase them down, but his spider sense tingled. He saw Wanda Maximoff and tried to attack him, but he decided to dodge her telekinesis in time. He then shot webs to restrict her movement, but she easily removed it. Ultron managed to flee away with Wanda and Pedro, and Spider-Man sent a message to the Avengers that Ultron has gone to Jonah Berg to acquire more vibranium. He told them that he needed to be careful with Wanda especially. Following Spider-Man's lead, the Avengers attacked Ultron while he was striking a deal with Claw. Ultron dispatched the twins to deal with the Avengers. All of the Avengers suffered the hallucinations indicated by Wanda. Peter, who knew what she can do, prepared taser shots. With his spider sense, he managed to evade her hallucinations. After realizing that the Avengers were under the hallucinations, Peter used his taser shot webs that he got from Parker Industries to stun them to break them free from the hallucinations. The other Avengers recovered except Bruce. Bruce himself turned into the Hulk and started to go onto a rampage before Stark managed to stop him with the Hulkbuster armor. As the Avengers were recuperating from the damage taken, Nick Fury arrived and gave the team a pep talk to form a plan to defeat Ultron. In Seoul, Ultron used Loki's scepter to enslave Ellen Klo and the Avengers team's friends. Friends. Using a symptic tissue technology, Vibranium and the Scepter's gem to craft a new body, Ultron began to upload his new body into the synthetic body. When Wanda learnt of Ultron's plan to create world extinction with his new body, they turned against him. The Avengers then created Vision with the Mind Stone in his brow, and Vision would earn the trust of the others by lifting Thor's hammer, showing that he was worthy indeed. Much of the Age of Ultron timeline will be the same as in the original timeline, and Ultron would attack to use the remaining vibranium to build a machine to lift the capital city of Sokovia into the sky before attempting to plunge it into the ground. The Avengers would then battle with Ultron and his minions. Nick Fury, along with Maria Hill, James Rhodes, and the other S.H.I.E.L.D. agents arrived to evacuate the other civilians. Clint, meanwhile, saw a kid who was trapped during the fight with Ultron's goons. He went to S.H.I.E.L.D. him, but realized that there was not enough time to evade the gunfire. Just then, Clint and the kid were rescued via a web that was in 
in a formation of a parachute. The robots that were shooting them were destroyed easily. Clint saw that Spider-Man has saved them. Pedro was not killed and brought the kid to safety. Ultron's drones started to attack and overwhelm the Avengers. However, Wanda, who was in charge of her post to destroy Ultron's primary body, stuck to her duties, unlike the original timeline where she was upset with her brother's death. And this allowed the drones to activate the machine, sending Sokovia to the ground. Wanda was fending off the drones normally with her brother, as the robots were seemingly endless. The Avengers feel that they lack the strength to continue on. However, just then, they saw a whirlwind of sand flying in the sky. The sand entered the robots from the inside, decimating all of them. Peter was surprised to see that it was none other than Sandman. He was at Sokovia. Sandman said that he was in Sokovia as he was doing a humanitarian work for the poor. After the events of Spider-Man 3, Flint Marco's daughter recovered from her illness and Flint started doing good deeds for the society. He then sent himself to Sokovia and any refrained from using his powers at all. But when the entire Sokovia was threatened and saw the other heroes fighting against Ultron, Flint remembered the time when he was a villain. He decided to help the others as redemption for repaying Peter for forgiving him last time. Sandman and Vision would eventually tag team to confront and destroy Ultron's last remaining body. As Sokovia was never lifted, and Quicksilver survived in this timeline, the ending of this timeline will now be changed. Ultron was destroyed for good. Peter then thanked Sandman for his help before he ended up leaving. The Avengers have established a new base run by Nick Fury, Maria Hill, Eric Selvig, Ellie and Klo, and Thor left to Asgard to learn more of the major forces, which would be the Infinity Stones and Thanos later on. Peter, meanwhile, returned to Mary Jane and his daughter, Mae Parker, and Wanda and Pedro would join the other Avengers, which were Rhodes, Vision, and Sam Wilson. The Sokovia Accords were never established as Sokovia never crashed down and the Avengers invaded a major disaster. This would result in the absence of the Civil War timeline at all as there were no Sokovia Accords. Wanda would still be stable as her brother was still alive, and Peter, meanwhile, resumed his duties at Parker Industries as he was wondering whether he should return to active hero duty after all. Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier, was still on the run from the authorities after the incident that took place during the events of Captain America the Winter Soldier. As the newly recruited Avengers were training the Avengers compound, Peter, meanwhile, has resumed his duties at Parker Industries. He also hired Dr. Kurt Con Connors to be the new head of division for the biogenetics department. His daughter Mae Parker is three years old and Mary Jane was awaiting for another newborn son which was due within the next three months. MJ was no longer a singer at the club as she has taken the role of a secretary at Peter's company. Tony Stark never recruited the MCU version of Peter Parker as there was no Civil War events. Tony knew that there was another similar Spider-Man out there but decided not to recruit him as he was still a kid. One Spider-Man was enough, he thought to himself. Much of the beginning of Infinity War's timeline will be the same. The Mad Titan Thanos acquired the Power Stone after obliterating Xandar. He then moved to acquire the Space Stone from Thor in his Asgardian spaceship after killing Himdall and Loki. Thanos then shifted his next target to the Reality Stone at Nowhere. Himdall managed to send Hulk back to Earth during his dying moments as Thor watched. Hulk crashed into the Sanctum Sanctorum, who was discovered by Doctor Strange and Wong. Strange went to alert Tony, as the rift between the Avengers were non-existent due to the Sokovia Accords not happening. Tony contacted Steve Rogers and informed him of the threat Thanos poses. Steve, Natasha, Wanda, Sam, Pedro, and Vision were on active patrol duties around the world, eliminating terrorism and global threats. Steve told Tony that he would immediately head to Tony when they have accomplished their other duties. Tony contacted Peter and also informed him of Thanos. Since Peter was not in active duties as Spider-Man since the Age of Ultron events, Peter went to visit Tony in his Peter Parker form. After hearing Strange and Wong explain about the Infinity Stones, Peter was surprised all these years as a hero, he has yet to hear of something of this scale before. Just then, they heard people running and scrambling on the streets. Peter, Tony, Bruce Banner, Strange and Wong went out as they saw a large spaceship appearing in the sky. Down came Ebony Maw and Cole Obsidian. Peter, who never brought a Spider-Man suit, was told by Strange and Wong to get back. Peter and Bruce went to bring the other civilians to safety. Strange, Wong, and Tony, meanwhile, tried to
tried to fight back Call Obsidian and Ebony Maw. As Ebony was stronger compared to the trio, the Black Order were on the brink of winning. As Ebony was about to transport Strange back to his spaceship, he was punched continuously by a force. Ebony was then restricted by some sort of telekinesis similar to him. The cavalry have arrived. Steve, Sam, and Pedro fought against Call Obsidian, while Wanda, Natasha, and Vision were fighting against Ebony Maw. Steve threw his shield at Call Obsidian, while Strange created a portal cutting his head off. With Call Obsidian out of the picture and Ebony Maw left, the Avengers shifted their attentions to him. Steve Rogers said that they should keep Ebony Maw for interrogation, while Tony said that it would be better off for them to place back Ebony Maw on his spaceship and follow him to where Thanos might be. Tony and Cap had a brief rift when Peter's spider sense started to tingle. He told them to be careful when they heard a scream coming from Vision. They saw Vision being stabbed in the back by Corvus Glaive. Wanda was about to use her telekinesis powers on him before Proxmia and Corvus then took Vision away, while Sam, Tony, and Steve made the chase to them. The trio eventually caught up to them as Corvus Glaive was on the brink of removing the Mind Stone from his head. Pedro came in time to punch Corvus Glaive away and allowing them to retrieve Vision safely. Realizing that they have messed up, the Black Order retreated while promising that the next time they will acquire the stone. With Vision wounded badly, the Avengers were deciding on what they should do with him. The Mind Stone plays a key effect in Thanos' Infinity Stone's plan. If they were to destroy the stone, then Thanos can be stopped. Steve, however, refused as he said that no lives will be sacrificed. As Tony and Steve were battling over what they should do with Vision, Peter said that he would be able to extract the Mind Stone without killing him. However, Vision might lose much of his abilities and he would just be an intelligent android. Vision said that this would be the best shot. Peter says that it would be advisable to have some backup at Parker Industries with some Avengers guarding them. Tony's tracker beeped as they found the location of Ebony Maw in the deep space. They figured that Ebony would most probably be united with the Black Order. Tony decided to build a spaceship that could transport them into space if necessary. Captain America said that he will head over to Wakanda to acquire help of Black Panther, perhaps. Sam, Natasha, and Bruce joined Captain America, while Wanda and Pedro remained at Parker Industries with Peter. Strange and Wong returned back to the Sanctum Sanctorum, and the Mad Titan, meanwhile, has obtained the Reality Stone and the Soul Stone on Nowhere, and Vormir respectively. Thor went to obtain the Stormbreaker with Rocket Raccoon and Groot. In the original timeline, Tony, Strange, and Spider-Man joined forces with the Guardians of the Galaxy to fight against Thanos alone on Titan. However, in this timeline, due to none of the Avengers were on Titan, it was only Star-Lord, Drax, Mantis, and Nebula who were on Titan this time. Gamora was killed on Vormir, while the other two were with with Thor. The Guardians of the Galaxy were spying on Thanos, talking to his Black Order. The Mad Titan returned with the Black Order on Titan with four stones already completed on his gauntlet. He was disappointed that his children have failed him and Kal was already dead. He says that he will go to Earth himself and told him to prepare the armies. Star-Lord knows that going head-on against Thanos and his children would result in suicide. Knowing that Thanos will be heading to Earth, Star-Lord told the rest to prepare the space ship and sent the coordinates to Earth. Steve then told Black Panther that they will be needed in his help as Thanos is coming and soon the entire universe will be doomed once he gets his hands on all of the Infinity Stones. Black Panther agreed and dispatched Shiri to New York to help Peter with the extraction of the Mind Stone. Meanwhile at Parker Industries, Peter was already 50% of completion of the extraction with the Mind Stone. Wanda and Pedro were still around during the process and Tony's satellites then informed him that there were legions of spaceships in the Earth's atmosphere, and the estimated location of the spaceships dropping will be in New York City. Tony then knew that Thanos will be arriving soon. He contacted Steve and Peter about it. Steve said that Black Panther and his armies of Wakanda will be arriving soon in New York. Tony alerted General Thunderbolt Ross about the arrival of Thanos. However, Ross refused to believe him and thought that this was a hoax from Tony. Tony then dispatched his iron drones across New York to evacuate them as a huge war will break out in the midst of New York. As Shuri arrived, the process of the Mind Stone extraction was already at 75%. Doctor Strange, Wong, and Tony with his Iron Legions arrived at Parker Industries, as they know that the war with Thanos is soon. Just
just then Thanos and his armies arrived in New York. General Thunderbolt Ross, who realized that Tony's warning was real, dispatched the National Guard, Marines, the Air Force, and the U.S. Army to New York. Peter and Shiri were working together swiftly to fasten the Mind Stone extraction from Vision. Steve, Doctor Strange, Wong, and the other wizards from the Sanctum Sanctorum, Natasha, Bruce Banner in this Hulkbuster uniform, and Black Panther would arrive in New York with their armies assembled. The hordes of Jatari and Outriders were unleashed as the Avengers battled against them. Pedro went to help the Avengers in the battle while Wanda stayed behind. Peter, who has been working on a mod modified Iron Spider suit since his last hero days, prepared it on standby. As the Avengers, Wakandans, were battling with the hordes and getting overwhelmed, they saw a bright light emerging in the middle of New York. Thor has arrived with a Stormbreaker alongside Groot and Rocket Raccoon. Thor then tried to clear away the hordes of Thanos' armies. Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight made their way to Parker Industries to obtain the Mind Stone. Thanos said that he will deal with Strange with Ebony Maw. As Corvus Glaive and Proxima slaughtered their security at Parker Industries, they made their way to the top of the building. However, and missed the way, Proxmia was flung backwards, crashing into the doors. Corvus was surprised and looked backwards before he was slashed across the face. He saw a giant lizard standing in front of him. The lizard, who was Kurt Connors' alter ego, started clashing with Corvus Glaive and overpowering him. Proxmia got back up and was about to stab him with a spear before Webbs electrocuted her, incapacitating her. Spider-Man has modified a suit to have electric webs, making sure that she was down for the count completely. Corvus then battled against the Lizard and Spider-Man. After a brief battle, Spider-Man outwitted Corvus before using his own glaive to stab him in the chest. The Lizard then ripped his head off, killing him for good. Proxmia Midnight awoken and saw Corvus was dead. Furious, she grabbed her spear and wanted to stab the lizard before Peter managed to blast a hole in her stomach with a Wakandan gun. Proxmia and Corvus were both dead. The lizard reverted back to Kurt Connors. Kurt thanks Spider-Man for giving him a chance at redemption in his life by introducing him to work at Parker Industries. Kurt originally managed to find a way to recover his lost arm with the lizard DNA, but it overpowered him, turning him into a monster. However, Peter as Spider-Man defeated him. Peter as the CEO of Parker Industries then created a cure for Kurt, which allowed him to suppress his lizard DNA in him at will. This allowed Kurt to transform into the lizard only when necessary. Spider-Man then told Kurt to be on alert for any intruders while protecting Shiri. Wanda was still on her post of looking out for Vision, and Peter then changed back from his Spider-Man suit and continued to work on Vision. Natasha, War Machine, Captain America, Bruce Banner, Tony, Doctor Strange, Wong, and Black Panther were battling the Mad Titan. Thanos, who had four stones with him, managed to overpower them. Thanos then tried to acquire the Time Stone from Strange, but Strange manifested himself into thousands of himself before trying to restrain him. Thanos found the one and only Strange and caught him. He was choking Strange and grabbed the Time Stone. However, Pedro came and started punching Thanos repeatedly before the Mad Titan used the reality stone to turn him into cubes. Ebony Ma, meanwhile, made his way to Parker Industries. After learning that the other two of the Black Order failed, Ebony saw the lizard and several guards at the entrance to the room where Vision was being kept. Ebony easily disposed of them with his telekinesis powers. The lizard tried to fight back, but was tied back against the wall. Entering the room, he saw that it was only Shiri there. Ebony then mocked Shiri as she was alone and that they could not stop Thanos. Spider-Man shot several webs to blind Ebony, but he easily deflected it. Ebony then started crushing Spider-Man's suit from the outside before Wanda emerged from behind and ripped him apart with her powers. Thanos, who was trying to acquire the stone from Doctor Strange, heard someone screaming his name. He looked up in the sky and wounded Thanos. Thanos, however, used the Power Stone to throw away Thor. Wounded from the Stormbreaker, Thanos went to get the Mind Stone first instead. A spaceship came crashing onto Thanos. Mantis jumped onto Thanos and tried to put his mind to sleep while Drax slashed Thanos from behind. Nebula and Starlord blasted shots at him to weaken him, and a whirlwind of sand came and blinded Thanos. Sandman has arrived after Peter has contacted him earlier of a possible world doomsday. Sandman agreed to help Spider-Man. The other Avengers, including Captain America, War Machine, Bruce Banner, Tony, 
and everybody else tried to restrain Thanos. Star-Lord knew that the Mad Titanus sacrificed Gamora and wanted to kill him, but Spider-Man came in and tased him with his webs. Star-Lord was knocked out unconsciously. Thor grabbed the Stormbreaker before chopping off Thanos' arm that had the gauntlet. Thanos watched as Thor said that his plans were finally over. Thor then summoned a powerful lightning bolt with a Stormbreaker and toasted Thanos. Realizing that Thanos was still alive, Tony said that the only way to end him once and for all would be to equip all the Infinity Stones and snap. Doctor Strange placed the Time Stone while Peter placed the Mind Stone, which was already removed by Peter and Shiri. The gauntlet was already complete. The question was who would wield the gauntlet? They needed to do it two times, one to snap away Thanos' army and the other destroy the stones. They agreed that nobody should hold all of the stones at once. Star-Lord wanted to get the gauntlet as he wanted to bring Gamora back to life. Tony wanted to create a world of peace with his Iron Legion and Captain America thought of going back in time with Peggy, as they all had their own desires to use the gauntlet for their own purpose. Thanos, who was still injured, but had a fighting desire, wanted to grab the gauntlet. Spider-Man's spider sense kicked in, and he webbed the gauntlet away. Peter said that they needed to focus and eradicate the true matter at hand. Armed with his iron spider suit, Peter grabbed the gauntlet, much to everybody's surprise. He then snapped, dusting away Thanos and his entire army. Peter collapsed from his wounds, sustained, and Tony quickly applied the nanotechnology to heal him. Peter was unable to snap the second time, and Thor said not to worry, as he said that he would snap instead. Thor removed the gauntlet from Peter before using the Infinity Stones to destroy the stones. He was able to tank the damage more than Peter, even though his army sustained a heavy damage, the Avengers and the Guardians realized how they were all so selfish with their own desires. After the Infinity Stones were destroyed and Thanos was defeated, Peter part Parker was recovering in the hospital under Tony's influence. While nobody knew his true identity as Spider-Man except Tony and Cap, Peter Parker decided to retire his Spider-Man identity for good. He said that he was too old for this, and Thor joined the Guardian along with their adventures in space. The rest of the Avengers, meanwhile, continued their superhero duties across the world. Flint Marco was hired to be the head of security at Parker Industries, while Kirk Connors continued his genetic research there. Meanwhile, somewhere in in Brooklyn, Tony's security cameras picked up an amateur superhero dressed in a Spider-Man costume, swinging and busting crime in New York. Tony showed Peter and asked him whether they should be aware of another Spider-Man in town. Peter said that he doesn't know, but it doesn't matter as anyone can be Spider-Man under the mask. A few months later, Mary Jane gave birth to their first son, Benji, and his daughter, Mae Parker, meanwhile, started showing displays of acrobatic skills and indicating that she has inherited Peter's jeans as Spider-Man. And that is going to wrap up. What if Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was in Avengers Infinity War? Now, it might have ended there, and I think, you know, a lot of people probably wanted me to do Endgame. I do believe that this story has to wrap up here. Even though I was planning on doing Civil War and Endgame, I believe that Tobey Maguire's Peter is a little bit too dark for that, and considering that I already did a version of Tobey Maguire in Avengers Endgame, I really wanted to to make things different by showcasing Spider-Man in Infinity War, but having them snap and live throughout this, I think it would have been a perfect ending, and maybe I could have done more, but again, I wanted to wrap it up, and I wanted to give you guys just a really good ending, so I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Now, I might be going in depth with Toby and other franchises such as Captain America Civil War, and I might do a few other things like Iron Man 2008, but it was really interesting to see how events would have unfolded if Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man was in Avengers Infinity War. That is going to be it for this video. If you guys did enjoy this video and want to see more, I will be doing Andrew Garfield's series next, and he will be in Captain America Civil War. There'll be a lot of stuff happening there but anyways as always guys do make sure to subscribe like share and turn your notifications on so you guys are all up to date with the latest content but anyways as always guys thanks for tuning in and have a fantastic day